Hey everybody, it's me again, Jason, and I want to talk about rocket recovery systems. And this applies to either model rocketry or amateur rocketry. You have to have A, a recovery system present, and B, a recovery system that is in good working order for your rocket to return to Earth after you've shot it into the sky. And a recovery system consists of the following. You have your shock cord, which connects the nose cone to the rocket body. The shock cord is important because it also ties in, in some cases, directly to the shock cord, or in this case, to the nose cone, your parachute. Parachutes come in different shapes and sizes. They are made of either very light, thin plastic, or made of nylon, or mylar, or any kind of very thin fabric that is also very tough and resilient. For the parachute to deploy properly, you have to make sure that your parachute line is not tangled. After every launch, you want to make sure that your line are straight, the parachute is folded properly, and then again folded in half, and gently wound with the line before you put it into the model rocket. If you wrap up the line too quickly to the parachute or too tight, what happens is it doesn't unfurl quick enough to let the parachute deploy. So it just needs to be lightly wrapped around the parachute to a certain extent. Before you get to doing that, one of the most important parts of a recovery system is the recovery wadding. You need about three to five sheets of these in every rocket. So what happens is when your rocket engine is spent on the way up, the ejection charge will fire and that's what helps blows everything out the top of the rocket to deploy the recovery system. After the apogee, of course, the nose comes off, the parachute flies out of there, as well as the shock cord, and the recovery wadding helps the ejection charge to burn that up and blow whatever's left of that out without damaging your parachute. If you do not use recovery wadding or not enough of it, your parachute will catch fire, it will not deploy properly or at all, your rocket will not return to you in one piece. Guaranteed. As I mentioned before, Parachutes come in all shapes and sizes, but there are two other recovery options. Smaller rockets use streamers. These don't do a heck of a lot. They pretty much there as a visual aid to help you see where the rocket's coming down. They twirl around on the uh, shock cord and not much else. The other recovery system, which I don't actually have, is called a twin blade recovery system. It acts like a helicopter. It deploys almost like the parachute, except it's static and it spins around like a helicopter and it slows the descent of your rocket. It's usually made out of balsa wood like this or very very thin strips of basswood and occasionally thin light strips of plastic. It's not a favorite amongst uh, rocket hobbyists and enthusiasts. We prefer parachutes. Uh, I use the standard Estes parachutes in a lot of my rockets but my tougher rockets and the ones that are designed to go higher I have mylar and nylon parachutes that I bought from scraps at the local fabric store and I use a lot of shock cord that's either rubber or I buy a roll of elastic cord from the fabric store because it's tougher than a lot of the sh uh, fabric shock cord you get with rocket kits. Fabric stores are a great resource for any ro rocket hobbyist and especially when it comes to recovery systems. That's all for today everybody.